right, what's up everybody? Hello again. Uh, Mike here with Airbus 320 Tech Talk. What do all those buttons do? Uh, I'm here in Orlando today on another overnight, uh, just uh, sitting down making a video for you. So uh, I wanted to pick up, uh, or actually revisit something we talked about last time. We, we kind of briefly covered a placard on the overhead panel. Uh, if you go back to the previous video, uh, number 10 there, we, we talked about this BUSS uh, placard here. In other words, the, the backup speed scale. And I I wanted to kind of pull out some graphics and just elaborate a little bit further on that because we, we talked about it last time. But if you didn't catch that video, um, basically this backup speed scale system is just a way that if the normal airspeed you know, display sensing um, you know, system on the airplane is, is not functioning properly, uh, we can kind of have this alternate means to keep us in a, a safe flying state. So I just kind of wanted to show you like what that would look like on the primary flight display if uh, you did revert to the, uh, the backup speed scale. So uh, just to show you initially, normally, you know, we'd be looking at something like this on the left side of the PFD. This is your, your normal speed tape here at the airspeed. Um, some other indications that we'll, we'll talk a whole lot more about later. But uh, this is what you're used, you're used to seeing every day. Uh, normal stuff here. But like I said, if we were to activate that backup speed scale system, you're going to get something that looks like this. And this is basically, um, think of it like the airplane is telling you that you're safe by kind of looking at the angle of attack and keeping you in this kind of like safe margin to just know that you're at a safe flying airspeed. So you're not, you know, getting necessarily a numerical value of, you know, how fast you should be going, but, you know, the airplane is just able to, to sense and detect, uh, like we said, uh, just aerodynamically, you know, the, the place in, uh, or the uh, attitude rather, uh, of the aircraft to keep you in a safe flying state and, you know, not getting too fast, not getting too close to a stall or anything like that. So it just kind of gives you this presentation of data. Uh, one other little sidebar note to mention, we do go into backup speed scale mode. Uh, the altimeter readings actually change from pressure readings to a GPS reading, interestingly enough. So just one little other uh, nuance about that portion of the system there. So hopefully that clears up a little bit of um, maybe confusion or, or it just kind of adds on a little bit extra uh, info for you from what we talked about last time there. So uh, moving on though, uh, the main topic of today's discussion we're going to talk about is this emergency evacuation panel down here. So uh, as you would assume, um, it's there if we need to evacuate the aircraft for whatever reason. So normally the way that, you know, we're we're told to, you know, or trained to trigger an evacuation is you're going to make a PA, but you're also going to use this little um, this little system up here to essentially activate an alarm in the cabin. And what it sounds like, if you were to activate this system, it's kind of like a, a high-pitched, like beep, 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 you know, kind of maybe like an, a, a fire alarm kind of sound and thing. So um, what would happen if you, you were to uh, use this push button here, the, the command button, uh, you would open up the, um, the little guarded switch there, you'd push it in, and you would get the tone in the uh, cabin as well as the flight deck and also at the flight attendant call stations in the forward and the aft portions of the aircraft you're going to get this like evac like flashing light and uh, that of course is um, one of the ways we tell everybody where we need to <laughs> evacuate the aircraft so um, this horn shutoff button what that does is it if the system has been activated and the alarm is still going off in the cabin, maybe you, you might want it to continue going off in the cabin, but you're in the flight deck, maybe you're still trying to run through some checklists and it, the, the alarm is you know, very loud and it, of course could be distracting. So this push button allows you to silence the, the flight deck alarm itself. So there's kind of a difference. If you wanted to silence all the alarms, you would have to use this button here once again and, and push it again to, to get it back into the out position. And it would silence you know, both alarms in the cabin and the flight deck. Like we said, this push button here would just silence the alarm in the flight deck. To the right of there, we have this little switch here, and we have two positions here. We have captain only, and we have captain and purser. So what this switch is here for is, you know, if for some reason the air carrier wanted in their procedures, they wanted the purser to be able to activate this alarm themselves as, as well, um, they might, uh, you know, have this switch normally in the captain and purser position. Um, and as you imagine, there's a button on the, the purser's position, or in other words, the forward flight attendant uh, call station up there, that they could push a button and activate the same alarm that we could up here. For whatever reason, my company has decided that it just always stays in the captain position, so you're never moving that. And uh, that is the significance of this, this little change of, of switch positions here. And one other interesting thing I wanted to kind of point out to you while we're talking about that is if you look at the shape of this switch here, 
You see this a couple other times in the Airbus flight deck, and this, this differs a little bit from other switches that uh, you might see. When, when you kind of see this little knurled, like raised portion here, it's, it's giving you a little extra something to grab onto because the way the switch is, is designed is you actually, you have to pull the switch out, kind of lift it over this little gate to get it into the falling position. So it's just like a, kind of like a, a halfway safety me mechanism, if you want to say, to get you or to prevent you from accidentally knocking the switch out of position perhaps, or it's just, just kind of like an added layer of like, you know, you're, you're really needing to verify, you know, that this is where you want the switch position to go because you have that additional action of not just throwing the switch, but having to lift it up over the gate and, you know, push it back down into its intended position kind of thing there. So um, as you would imagine, um, this is uh, not used in our day-to-day -day, uh, routine operations. Hopefully we're not having to evacuate an aircraft. Uh, so pretty self-explanatory and, and straightforward there. Um, I'll show you also if you were to do a lights test, because I always like to show you what, what exactly you, you would see uh, if things were activated in there. Uh, it would look something like this. Whoops. Uh, you can just see this, this red evac light would come on and the on light as well shows up if you were to activate the system once again uh, by pushing that button. Okay, one other thing I wanted to show you guys also is I figured it would be a good time just to kind of show you in the QRH what the actual evacuation procedure looks like. And we can kind of brief over that real fast so you can kind of see where, you know, in the manuals this, this button's actually referenced. And I pulled that up here. So we'll just kind of go through it real quick. So um, first of all, you know, just as with everything else we do on the airplane, even the emergency, emergency evacuation is not something that you just kind of do off the cuff or on the fly. I mean, there is a procedure for it that's outlined and prescribed. And, you know, we, we would pull out the book and, and follow exactly what it says to do if we were in this situation. So emergency evacuation checklist, uh, aircraft park and brake, you would uh, you would set it. Um, ATC, you would notify them, let you know, let them know that you're evacuating. Um, on the PA, uh, the captain's going to come on and say, this is the captain, remain seated, remain seated, remain seated. And this is kind of like, if you imagine one of these situations evolving, you know, let's, let's assume that this is like, you know, rejected takeoff or, you know, maybe you've just landed after an engine fire or, you know, something else is going on. There, there's kind of like this, this pause in time maybe that, you know, we, we try to keep, you know, people maybe from panicking in the back. So just, you know, you want them to stay, you know, seated just for an extra minute perhaps to, to kind of, you know, uh, accomplish these things or, or just verify that we absolutely are needing to do an evacuation maybe. So that's kind of the way that you could think about, you know, the purpose of having that statement in there. Um, this talks about, you know, if you were to use manual cabin pressurization, um, we, once again, we, we'd probably, you know, talk about this in a later, you know, portion of our, our uh, discussions. But um, if uh, you did have some kind of pressure basically remaining in the cabin, um, these steps here are just leading you to, to dump that cabin pressure so you don't have, you know, positive pressure behind the doors before you try to open them. So uh, this delta P just means cabin differential pressure. Just check, make sure that it's zero. So in other words, you know, from the inside to the outside of the aircraft, there is no pressure um, on, on either side. Uh, if it's not zero, it just tells you to go to manual mode um, and the vertical speed control uh, switch will use that and command it into the full up position, which is basically just going to open the outflow valve and it's going to dump any remaining pressure that might be in the cabin there. Uh, dome light, it tells you to turn it on. Uh, engine master one and two switches will turn them off. The fire push button switches for the engines and the APUs will push them. And the extinguishing agents for the engine and APU, uh, if they're required, will use them. So in other words, if there's a fire or some other reason, we, well, you would need to uh, put the agents or the extinguishing agents out in the the engines and APU there, you would use that. Um, it's it's kind of interesting too to me that the first couple times I read through this procedure, you know, they have this kind of pause here where, you know, it talks about like if evacuation is required, you know, at this point evacuation, you're going to initiate it. And um, it's kind of, um, it's kind of interesting that like, you know, they, they reference this as the emergency evacuation checklist you know, right off the bat. So in my mind, I'm, I'm kind of thinking like you're not going here unless you're, you're kind of sure that you're going to evacuate, but um, that's just the way they've got it written. So one little interesting nuance about the procedures there. So um, if evacuation is required, uh, cabin crew and passengers, captain's going to make the, the PA that's going to say, this is the captain, evacuate, evacuate, evacuate. And then he's going to use that push button to uh, trigger the alarm. And that is the notify step here. And one other thing that uh, it's kind of interesting that they talk about uh, here, that there's uh, general 
responsibilities that are kind of assumed by each flight deck crew member anyways in the the case of an emergency and normally the first officer interestingly enough you know lucky them right uh, they're the first ones to get out of the aircraft take the emergency equipment whatever is, is required and they're going to try to corral everybody away from the aircraft and kind of you know organize things or you know get them away from the hazards and uh, keep control outside of the airplane until emergency crews can arrive and the captain is there to you know kind of he's the last one off he's just making sure to, to check that everybody's off everybody's safe and uh, he evacuates, like we said, the, the, the last one, kind of uh, just like the captain of a ship, you know, maybe is the uh, you know, last, last one going off, excuse me, yeah, uh, going off if it's sinking or whatnot. So, um, and there's a note here, if it's uh, not possible to reach the passenger cabin, so let's say that maybe there was, you know, uh, an impact, you know, when the aircraft touched down and maybe the, the uh, cockpit door got, got twisted or torqued to the, to the point where you couldn't actually open it. Uh, it talks about using these clear view windows and basically, you know, once again, we'll, we'll talk about this at a little bit in time, but the Airbus windows can actually, there's this, you know, handle trigger thing. You can actually open the window and slide it like completely back to just open the window, you know, completely. And there's these escape ropes that the, that are mounted up, you know, kind of in the top of the, the flight deck that the, the cabin crew would use to evacuate and kind of shimmy your way down the, the side of the airplane uh, if it came to that. So uh, that's just, you know, that little note there, what that talks about. Um, I wanted to just, you know, talk about a couple brief notes too, just as far as evacuations themselves are considered. Um, just a few, you know, things that we're trying to think about, you know, both as, you know, flight deck crew members and cabin crew members. We, we always talk about, you know, hey, what are our most usable exits if we actually are in this type of situation? So consider the circumstance of, you know, let's say you had a, an engine fire on the, the, the right side of the airplane or the number two engine. Well, hopefully we're going to try to evacuate out only out the left side. Uh, because you want to get people away from the fire and the hazard and whatever else is going out there. So there's, you know, ideally like some type of coordination or, or some assessment really that's that's taking place like as the situation is unfolding to try to, as we said, use the most suitable exits. Um, another great example of this is, you know, look back at USA Airways uh, 1549, you know, the Miracle on the Hudson flight. Um, these guys did a phenomenal job, obviously. Um, but, you know, go back and look at those pictures and, you know, remember seeing the airplane kind of sitting, you know, butt end down low into the water. Well, you know, those exits were, were submerged so that the crew knew, hey, if we pop these exits, we're going to take on more water. You know, the plane might start sinking, you know, uh, faster. Or, of course, you know, not something they wanted to, to happen before they got everybody off. So they, you know, very intelligently used their brains and they only used the forward exits to evacuate everybody and the overwings as well. So uh, that's just, you know, a little, little something that we're always trying to think of if we are in the situation. And the last one is, you know, also this business about um, you, you really want to only absolutely do an evacuation if it's absolutely completely necessary. Now, of course, if there's ever any doubt in your mind, you're going to do it in the interest of safety just to, you know, kind of try to take the conservative route. But you, you really have to put some critical thought into when you do this. You don't want to jump the gun, do it prematurely or unnecessarily because there's a lot of responsibility that comes along with this type of decision. Obviously, you know, it, it falls essentially on the captain for the most part. And if the flight deck crew members are incapacitated, it falls upon the in-flight team. But, um, you know, it's just kind of always assumed that even the best of evacuations, no matter how well it goes, I mean, there's going to be um, some panic, there's going to be confusion, and unfortunately, you know, there's probably going to be some broken bones and some twisted ankles and, you know, maybe some bumps and bruises and things like that. So we really don't want to hurt people unnecessarily. So that's, you know, why this, this decision is such a big one. But, you know, it's just something that we, we try to keep in mind uh, if we ever are in this type of situation needed to do that. So, um, that's pretty much all I had for you guys today. Once again, I, I said last time, if you have questions about anything, it could be about this presentation or anything else you're, you're curious about, uh, leave it down in the comments section or send me a private message and I'd be more than happy to try to address whatever questions you had as, as best I can. So uh, once again, I appreciate you guys tuning in and until the next time, uh, have a great day and we'll talk to you later.